NASA has just restored plans to include a lunar landing on its Artemis IV mission to the moon later this decade. In a presentation on October 28th at the American Astronautical Society's Werner von Braun Memorial Symposium, Mark Kurisic, Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development at NASA, outlined the series of Artemis missions on the books for NASA through the late 2020s. That included Artemis IV, which he described as the second time people land on the moon under Artemis after the Artemis III mission. However, earlier this year, Kurisic and other NASA officials said that NASA was not planning to include a lunar landing on Artemis IV. Instead, they said the complexity of the mission, which will involve the delivery of the IHAB habitation module to the gateway on the first flight of the upgraded Block 1B version of the Space Launch System, precluded a lunar landing. Kurisic confirmed after the panel that NASA had decided to include a landing on Artemis IV again. Besides that, he also revealed that the mission would likely use the Option B version of SpaceX's Starship Lander. NASA announced in March it would exercise Option B in its human landing system contract with SpaceX, which originally covered an Option A lander that SpaceX will demonstrate on the Artemis III mission. Option B would fund changes to the Starship Lander to support more ambitious missions in the later sustainable phase of Artemis, and include a second demonstration mission. Simply put, the contract is an extension of the Artemis program and we'll see SpaceX develop a spacecraft capable of sustaining human presence on the moon. NASA announced it would fund Option B at the same time it unveiled the sustaining lunar development effort to select a second lunar lander provider for those later missions. Kurisic said it would be unlikely that the lander selected in that program would be ready in time for Artemis IV, and instead would be demonstrated on Artemis V. In a schedule released as part of the agency's fiscal year of 2023 budget proposal in March, days after announcing the SLD program, NASA projected Artemis IV launching in 2027, but without a lunar landing. That same schedule expects Artemis III to launch no earlier than 2025, with Artemis V to follow in 2028 as part of an annual cadence of missions. Though that date will depend on several factors. One is the readiness of the Option B version of the Starship Lander. During another panel at the symposium, NASA and SpaceX officials said they were making good progress on the lander, but provided few technical details or a schedule. Rene Ortega, the HLS chief engineer at NASA, praised SpaceX for giving the agency access to hardware and test data from the overall Starship launch vehicle development effort. It's a big deal. It's one of the practices that I've been impressed with, he said. The Artemis IV schedule will also depend on the readiness of the IHAB module being developed by Europe and Japan and the SLS Block 1B itself. That version of SLS, which uses the more powerful exploration upper stage, in turn requires a new mobile launch platform the Mobile Launcher 2. NASA officials, including Administrator Bill Nelson, have been unusually publicly critical of the ML2 prime contractor Bechtel for major cost overruns and schedule delays. As Jeremy Parsons, deputy manager of NASA's Exploration Ground Systems program, said during another conference panel on October 27th, right now, Mobile Launcher 2 is the critical path to Artemis IV. It's something we're working the schedule very intensely on. Meanwhile, NASA is currently soliciting proposals for the SLD program, formerly known as Appendix P, of its Next Space Technologies for Exploration Partnerships, or Next Step effort. NASA issued the call for proposals on September 16th with an original deadline of November 15th. NASA pushed back the deadline from October 21st to December 6th, to provide more time for the agency to review requests by companies for use of government facilities. During a conference panel session on October 28th, NASA and several companies declined to discuss details about the SLD procurement because it was ongoing, including whether they would submit a proposal and, if so, with whom they were teaming. However, they did discuss work on a separate Next Step effort, Appendix N, to support work on sustainable lunar lander technologies. NASA selected five companies in September of 2021 for $146 million in studies on key technologies for such landers. Some of the companies have used the Appendix N awards to continue work on concepts they proposed in the original HLS competition. Dianetics felt like we had a very sustainable lander approach even in the base period. So we really appreciated the opportunity to further mature that design during Appendix N, said Andy Crocker, HLS Program Manager at Dynetics.
He said the company has been working on about 20 different tasks related to risk reduction on its lander design, including the lander's engine, which uses liquid oxygen and methane propellants. The company performed a static fire test of that engine a week earlier, he noted. I think it helped continue the momentum that we built up from the base period, said Ben Sitchi, Senior Director of Lunar Program Engineering at Blue Origin of its Appendix N activities. That included work on cryogenic fluid management for the hydrogen fuel used on the BE-7 engine, as well as precision landing technologies and dust mitigation. Blue Origin competed for the Option A award that was ultimately won by SpaceX as part of the so-called national team that included Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, two companies that won separate Appendix N awards. Those companies are examining different approaches to lunar landers. Under Appendix N, we've been given a great opportunity to step back and take a look at everything that has been developed since the Apollo missions and essentially pick what we think is a series of the best potential characteristics of each of those different concepts. Northrop's HLS program director, John Marzano, said, He said the company is looking at two parallel efforts for lunar lander engines. One is an internal project leveraging experience dating back to TRW, which developed an engine for the Apollo lunar lander. The other is an engine from Sierra Space. The lander, he said, would use storable propellants rather than cryogenic ones. Kirk Shireman, vice president of Lunar Exploration Campaign at Lockheed Martin, said his company is examining incorporating nuclear thermal propulsion in its lander architecture, seeing it as a key to future human exploration of Mars. Having a high thrust, high ISP or specific impulse engine is really key to our future, he said. The company is working on technologies such as cryogenic fluid management, fuel testing, and a turbo pump design. According to Kirk, the nuclear propulsion system would be used for transit between the Earth and the Moon. Lastly, he said, of the company's work with NASA, we've been able to continue our collaboration that, that we established under the base period of the HLS contract. It's continuing the great work, the great relationship that we had through Appendix N so that we can continue it, hopefully under Appendix P, whenever that comes about. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.